So a friend of mine bought a Garmin Edge 1030 based on my recommendation and I'm going to give him a little advice on how to use it. So that's what this video is going to be about. At the moment I just have one profile called Mountain. That's what I use for all my rides. However, there is one instance where I need another profile and I'm going to create that now. So I'm going to go to Activity Profiles. Whoops, didn't mean to go to Mountain. And go to Create New. I guess I'll create from a template. The template I'll use is road, and I'm going to call it car. C, A, I want an uppercase. A, R. So that's done. Blue is fine. Data screens are probably, I want the map. I don't care about some of this other stuff. So I'm going to get rid of all those. Remove, climb pro not remove. I'll turn it off. So I definitely want the map and for fields I'd like two fields. Like there we go. So I want this field to be navigation distance to next and then this field I want to be navigation distance to destination. So now that tells me how long I have to go before I get there. I'll return. So there we go. There should be a routing kind of thing. So on navigation, routing, road cycling, I want to change that to automobile driving. And I use this car thing to get to areas where I'm going to go ride, where I don't know where the trailhead is. Avoidance setup. I do not want to avoid highways or major highways. If I make a mistake, I, I don't want to avoid U-turns. Maybe I won't avoid unpaved roads. And I will avoid carpool lanes because I'm generally not carpooling. That's how I set up my car mode. My other thing is mountain biking. My data screens, screen 2 has my Edge Connect IQ app, the map. I, I've tried show elevation profile and it's a crappy profile. It's not worth using. I do like to have my Strava segments pop up and show on the screen while I'm doing them. And I just got a text message from somebody. Climb Pro is so cool. When you are following a route, this shows you how big and how steep the climbs are. It's really, really cool. I'll show you that when I go outside. File alerts. Drink alert, eat alert are pretty cool. I have auto pause turned off because I do not want this to stop recording when I'm not going. I want to record all of my time. Otherwise, it starts here at a certain miles an hour. Well, let's see if I do manual. No. Prompted. Starts notice speed, 6 miles an hour. So you can change that. So you can obviously imagine that 6 miles an hour when you're mountain biking, it'll be sh starting and stopping all the time. So I don't use that. Safety and tracking. Emergency contacts. I have my wife and my sister. I have used incident detection. And it comes on all the time. When I like stop quickly and lay my bike down, it thinks I crashed. So I generally have that turned off. But maybe I'll turn it on today. And yeah, false positives can occur. False positives mostly occur occur. But if I have my phone with me, it will actually send a text message to my wife and my sister saying I crashed. So under system, data recording, I say, ooh, I have smart. I actually prefer one second, but I'm going to leave it on smart. Cadence averaging, do not include zeros is what I want. And power averaging, I don't care. Display, I definitely have auto brightness turned on, so it gets brighter or darker. Sensors is the next thing I set up, and I have a cadence sensor, I have another cadence and speed sensor, I have a speed sensor, and I have a heart rate monitor. And when you add one of these, you can do search all, it'll find them all, it really works easy. Or you can choose a specific one. So that's how I have mine set up. I'm going to either switch to car, if I'm going to drive to a place to go ride, and I've already downloaded the route, what I would do is I'd go, I'd put it on car, and I'd go navigation, courses, saved courses, and Baldwin Hill, and say ride, and it'll tell me 
do you want to navigate to the beginning of the course? If I say yes, it'll tell me to take Route 7 to get down to Great Barrington area. So to stop a course, you hit the X there and say stop course. What I want to do is get back to here, switch this to mountain bike, navigation, courses, safe courses, Baldwin Hill, ride, navigate to beginning a course, and it's telling me to take a different route, a notice street. So instead of route seven. That's about it for how I have it set up. I don't use any of the training features. You can look at your history and go to your rides. Like Saturday I did 18 and a half miles. Look at how my training effect was. Not very. <laughs> if you don't use a heart rate monitor, that's not use useful. See how some of the segments went. So I have a few segments starred in Strava that show up on here and it gives me my time, uh, some information about it. So normally to use this I would just go click that and just hit the start button down here and start riding and as I hit Strava segments they would show up. If I'm following a course your Strava segments do not show up. So I'm going to demonstrate that when I get out on the bike. Sometimes I do some canoeing with this unit and when I do I need to find a route if I have a course they call them courses and I were say I wanted to this is this is on a lake I want to look at the map that that I spelled out Bernie on a lake so if I wanted to follow that route it's very difficult to follow in a canoe without going off course and getting all these constant messages that say off course recalculating so what I like to do is put always display on which is not normally on but if you put that on whenever you're looking at your map even if you're not following the course Bernie shows up on my map by the way I didn't show you this but if you if you want to remove the map from where you are you, you click that little hand symbol and then you can drag the map somewhere. Another thing you need to do is on connected features you want to pair your iPhone or your smartphone. To do that you need to have Garmin Connect installed. I don't want to unpair mine. If I do forget phone and then I have to go through the whole pairing up thing. You have to enable Bluetooth on your smartphone. You have to start up Connect Garmin Connect and then you have to connect the two and you got to enter a code and all that. But I don't want to go through that for this video. Hopefully you can figure that out. But I really need to turn off text messages, phone calls, social media and others. Maybe I'll keep phone calls turned on but I don't like to receive alerts all the time. So the other thing is if you have Garmin Connect and your Garmin device paired together. When you finish a ride, it will automatically upload to Garmin Connect. If you tie Strava to Garmin Connect, the ride will automatically be uploaded to Strava. You can be traveling and whatever rides you do will be automatically uploaded to Strava through Garmin Connect. So the other thing is, in my house, a lot of times I don't have my phone with me. I walk into the house and I have Wi-Fi enabled and I have auto upload enabled and I have my network Aspen connected and so it automatically uploads via Wi-Fi which seems to be a lot more reliable than Bluetooth. Okay so let's plug our Garmin into our computer. This one you have to get oriented in the right direction so looks like it's got to go in this way. There we go. Sometimes it doesn't want to connect to my computer. Now it's probably going to work. There we go. Got to wait till you get that computer looking symbol. Okay, so now on my Mac, Garmin shows up right here and there's a bunch of folders and the one folder that's really important is called new files and I'm going to go over that in a minute. This is how I create a ride. If you log into Strava and go to my routes, I make up a route for many of the rides that I do down South County or places I don't, I'm not familiar with. Sometimes I even have a canoe 
route that I will follow on my 1030. I don't know if you've used this, but to create a new route, you do this. I'm going to do a route today. From my house, I'm going to go up Brombach. So even though my house is over here, I'm going to start the ride at Stevens so I can show you how it calculates the things and says course found and all that stuff. So this is the route that I'm going to take. I'm going to zoom out, out, and go this way, this way. Whoops. I hate that. So it has trouble going through the condos. And there's the need to put several points there. And then it will do that correctly. And I'm going to take Minor Road. You're familiar with all these roads. Goodell, Bridge. And I'm going to go this way to Pottermont Road. And Churchill Street. Let's say I wanted to do some trails. So I'm going to zoom in here and you can see Strava anyway has some of these trails on it and the GPS itself will have some of these trails. So if I were to do this and this, let's say I wanted to actually go around this loop. It'll do that on Strava and on your GPS. I'll end here. So if I save that route, and I usually call it mountain bike, I'm going to call it Larry test, and I usually put how long it is. So the ride says 19.59 miles, so I'm going to call it 20, and say save, and then view my route. I can download this route, export to GPX. So I'm going to do that, and it's going to say, well, how do you want to, what do you want to do with it? What I really want to do is save it to a file. So I'm going to save it. To my downloads folder and then if I go to my downloads folder Larry test is here the way I normally put this on my GPS is to copy it so I click edit copy and then I go to my Garmin Garmin new files and I don't know what these two things are I'm gonna get rid of them paste it in so I did edit, edit paste so now when I start up my GPS, it's going to find that file and load it into my saved courses. The other option, Garmin has something called Basecamp, and Garmin Basecamp is free. Pretty much looks like this. So if I double clicked on that or if I had said open with Basecamp, it would be right here. Here's the track, and it shows you all the points, and you can change the color. So now it's a red line, and so there's my route. Under Maps, I have a whole mess of maps, but the map on your Garmin is, if I go to Garmin Express, it's called Routable Cycle Map United States 2019.2.0. So if I go to Maps Central, so it's divided into two, so I'm going to try North, and there we go. This is the detailed map from your Garmin device. So if I zoom into here, at some point, the trails show up. So there you can see that and you can follow all these trails. The other way to transfer this to your device will be to say transfer, send Larry test to device. And it's going to ask you, why is that? No Garmin GPS was found. I'm still connected. That's weird. That usually works, but I, that's not how I usually do things. I usually just copy the file. So anyway, I don't really use Basecamp for anything. There is another step you should probably do is you can see what all the segments are you're going to go by. And say I want Lake Crest Cut Through. It's a real short segment. If you star a segment, it will be downloaded to your Garmin GPS if you sync it with Garmin Express. I usually hit sync and it's syncs everything to my GPS. One nice thing about this GPS is the map updates every so often and all you need to do is sync and you get an updated map. And the map is of like the whole United States and Canada, I believe. It's pretty cool and it's got amazing 
detail on the trails. So another way I find places to ride is I go to Explore and Segment Explore. You used to be able to go Activity Explore, but they got rid of that for privacy reasons, I guess, which kind of makes not much sense at all. But say I was going to go ride Case Mountain where you are. I don't know where it is. Let me go to uh, Trail Forks, Mountain, Connecticut. Okay, so it's just below Bolton. Bolton, Connecticut, search. Okay, so Case Mountain is there. So if I wanted to ride there, I'd look at some of these segments and... So say I want to do Dingleberry Climb. I would click on that segment and I would go look at who has done it and who's done it recently. So if somebody did it in October 2019 and what I want to do is go look at his ride and he rode 10.9 miles in an hour. Now somebody who's number two on the Strava board, this 10.9 miles could take me two hours. It looks like a pretty decent ride. Looks like you went up the left side, down around, and counterclockwise around that way. So I would I would know to be going left and then right and then back around and go to left there. That looks like a pretty good ride. Because, because I'm a Strava Premium member, I can download his ride. I don't remember which plan I chose, but it only cost me $23.99 for a whole year. Because I think it's $59 for a full-fledged membership. I can download his ride and save it to a file. It's going to be called morning ride, which kind of sucks. So maybe I actually would open it in Basecamp and say, okay, and then I would take his morning ride and retitle it to be Case Mountain 11 for 11 miles. The color doesn't matter for your GPS, but I like to change them to red. Now, if I were to take this and Let's try to send it to the device. No Garmin found, that's okay. Let's do file, export, selected user data to downloads. If I go to my downloads folder, Case Mountain 11 is there. So I'm gonna take that one and say copy, and then go to my Garmin, Garmin new files, and paste that in there. So now I could go do that ride if I wanted to. So that's how I find rides to do in places I've never been. So on his on his ride, he did a bunch of segments. I could star those segments, and then when I came across them, they would show up. However, if I'm following a route, they only show on the map. You don't get the starting segment thing. So besides creating a route or downloading somebody else's route, there's a third way I get GPX files. Certain events or websites will give you links to suggested rides or the actual ride for the event. If I go to my website and I go to mountain biking and I go to Pittsfield State Forest, I have a couple links to various rides. So if I want to do just the family trails, I could download this and let's open it in Basecamp. So here's the Pittsfield State Forest Family Trails. And I could, I could follow this ride if I wanted to. Okay, when I'm gonna go for a ride, I hold down the power button for a second. Now I, and then I go to Navigation, Courses, Saved Courses, Larry Test 20. And as you recall, I'm not quite at the start of it. So it's going to say, do you want to navigate to the beginning of the course? I'm going to say yes. Okay, now you can see which way it wants me to turn. And no cars are coming, so I can go boom. Now I'm approaching Stevens Street. And it should find the course. Course found. Virtual partner updating. <laughs> And, oh, when I'm following a course, it gives me where the climbs are. And the first one is nine miles ahead, and it's a 4% grade. The next one is 12 miles ahead, and it's a 5% grade. Keep going. Here's my virtual partner. It looks like I am 18 seconds behind him. I really should pick up my pace. Well, this is that Connect IQ app screen that I like so much. And 
Here's my navigation. You can see that I'm coming up to a corner. Oh, so now my feet, what it looks like. Now I'm around the corner. I completed that corner. Okay, right now I am navigating and I have a segment coming up here. You can see in the green line, but because I'm navigating, it's not gonna do the Strava Live segment thing. It's just gonna show me that the segment starts right there. What I'm gonna do is go back turn off navigation, show you what a Strava Live segment looks like. This should tell me I'm off course, I think. There it goes, off course. Now it's telling me to do a U-turn, which is correct. can never get this to work with ski gloves. Stop the current course. And now it's showing me that I have a segment coming up called Lake Crest Cut Through. And I'm going to blast through that as fast as I can. Okay. So I'm four seconds behind the KOM. And I'm dead even with my PR. So. Still dead even with my PR. I eight seconds ahead of my PR. And I broke my PR by six seconds. This is the Connect IQ app I like so much because of the analog speedometer. Okay. 20 minutes? All right. When you told me, it was after 20. Yep. So I'm just... Alright, I'm recording now, so... Drink! There you go! <laughs> it just told me to drink. I guess you figured that one out. Well, I'm guessing it tells you to drink every 20 minutes, which is way earlier than I would drink. I would do this whole ride without drinking. See that little graph down at the bottom of the elevation? That thing's useless. I'm going to show you the Climb Pro in a second, which is awesome. I wish they'd put that into this so I'd know what kind of percent grade I was had to do and how much I had left and all that. So pretty soon I should get an eat alert. Edit. Oh, eat. <laughs> Edit. Eat 100 calories. I think I will. These are my favorite things. Nature's Bakery Fig Bars. Okay, I want to go back to navigation and do Larry 20, and we'll see Climb Pro coming up. I don't want to navigate to the beginning of the course because I'm already on the course. Now I do have a segment that's just started. You can see why there's a green line there. I am on the segment, but I'm not going to have my Strava statistics on there because I'm following a course. Here we go. This is Climb 1 of two on this ride, eight tenths of a mile, and the grade is four percent. If this were steeper, it would show different colors, but this is a pretty gradual climb. But it's pretty cool, it shows you how we are on the climb with that little red dot. Although this scale here on the bottom slides around, so it doesn't show you the whole climb. But I have 0.68 to go, 4% grade remaining. Right now with them going at 4% grade, 7%, 8%. So my next climb is in two miles. So I know, you know, how hard I can push this. So if you were doing a century or a gravel grinder and you had the root plugged in, this would be invaluable because you'd know how many big climbs you had left and how far away they were. So now, this turned, oh, it's 
telling me I have to turn. Yeah, I know I have to turn. I wanted my climb, climb ghost. That's my climbing screen. 500 feet to go. Uh, oh, I must be going around the corner and up this little rise. And the climb is complete. And this is another fairly gentle climb, unfortunately. So you can't see all the different colors. Climb complete. Climb two and two. No more climbs on this ride. Okay, so now I'm coming up to the trail in the woods. Gonna take it. Clearly shows you which way to go. Even tells you that you're riding on rotten apple. We come to the end of this route or course. Okay, I'm shutting it off, saving my ride, and better recover for seven hours. But that's it now. This should start to upload when I get close enough to our Wi-Fi. I do not have the phone with me. Ah, uh, phone connected. I don't know if it's going to upload via the phone. See, it says transferring. Lost satellites because I'm in my basement. And still transferring. I'm taking forever. Okay, it's done transferring. That took a long time. Now, one thing I want to know is my battery level is still quite high. The battery in this seems to last a lot longer than on my Garmin 810. All right, there are a couple more things I wanted to show you. One was the Climb Pro. I didn't do a course yesterday that really demonstrated that very well. So if I go to courses, saved courses and a uh, longer course that I've done, Sunday 43. It's going to load the course. So what I wanted to show you about this was the elevation. No, not the elevation. Climb Pro. So the climbs. So Climb Pro figures out where all the climbs are. And on that route, there are nine climbs. And the first one is average grade of 6%. But you see how the nice colors show you that it's, you know, fairly steep and then level and then really steep and then gets easier. Let's go to the next climb. That's an easy climb and this one's a little more difficult and this one's 1.42 miles long and average grade of 6% with a piece of it very steep. I don't know what, how they decide what colors to display things in. But when you're riding up it, it's pretty cool to know, oh, this is where it's going to start getting easy or you know, I got a little break in the middle of this climb, or this one's not going to be that bad, or this one's going to be bad and then get easier. It's really a cool feature, and I love it. So that's Climb Pro. The other thing I wanted to tell you was you can actually do Course Creator and create a course without having to go to a computer. The way you do that, go first, see what our settings are at. Okay, this popularity routing thing is awful. You're going to put some dots on the map It's going to try to come up with a course and you may or may not like that course. So I like to turn that off and then I'm going to go back and say mountain biking and calculation method is mini minimize distance. I don't know that I minimize time, minimize ascent. I guess I'll leave it on minimize distance. Lock on road is off. So now, if I add my first location, and I'm going to use the map, and we're back to the zoomed in map, so now I'm going to zip over to Hancock Road, and try to zoom in, and say I were to start, actually, 
This, the, trying to locate the map on the pin is a pain in the ass. You can just tap and the pin will move. So if I wanted to start there, I would say use. And then maybe I want to go in Rotten Apple. And I could say use. And I'll go up Honey Bear. Use. And I'll. I want to maybe go to there and use and come back Dublin's run use and come back fuzzy bunny back to the start use and now I'm done and I'm going to say view map it's going to calculate it and there, it made a loop following trails. That, that works on the road too, but I just want to demonstrate it on trails. So that is pretty freaking cool. And then you could just say ride it. So there's the little arrow showing you which direction to take that in. And as you rode around, it would show you where you went and guide you along the way. Okay, we are almost done, but there's one last thing I want to show you, which is under navigation, you can have save locations, recent finds, and stuff like that, but you can also do search, and you could search for a city, and it's going to come up with something like that, and you can spell out the name of the city, like if I want to go to Dalton, Mass, it would do that, and I could go ride, or if I wanted to go to an address, I first have to choose the state. I want to do Massachusetts. So M, A, and Massachusetts is there. Enter city or postal code, which would be, say I want to do Dalton again. Dalton, Mass. House number, say one. And street name, let's try High Street. High Street, and it'll, it found it and says, do you want to ride there? And I could ride there and it would calculate how to get there. So that's the last thing I wanted to show you. I think this is an unbelievably great bike computer and I think it is the best on the market for navigation purposes anyway. So I hope you found this video useful and if you know how to do some things that I don't know how to do, let me know. Thanks.